All right, just to kind of let you know, hey, by the way, guess what? Eight weeks, five days. Okay, it's, it's, it's getting here soon. So, just to kind of uh, show you some reality of it. All right, so, I'm going to run through the rice table problems. Ooh, that was like nails on a chalkboard. Come on. I'll just do this. Please stop wasting my time. Okay, so let's go through these real quick. Um, I'm just going to kind of go ahead and set the rice table up. And uh, you guys did a very good job in this, uh, but I do want to cover just a few things just to kind of make sure you're all on the same page with me in terms of what you're supposed to be writing, what you're supposed to be looking at, and how you're supposed to be reading it. Because the way you do this is very important. Um, uh, in terms of how things are stated and how things uh, can be stated and how you're supposed to just pay very close attention to it, okay? All right. So at 1,000K, 0 0.250 moles of SO2 and 0 0.200 moles of O2 react. So what have they just told you about SO2 and O2? They're what? They're reactants, simply based on the verbiage. So... You have to really pay attention to how you how they word things because the last problem we did on the rice tables prior to this, me and uh, Janaysia was looking at it this morning. It said hydrogen iodine was synthesized. What does it mean to be synthesized? To be created or to be made? Well, when it's to be made, where will you put that? That's a product. So it's very imp imperative of how you read these things. All right. So we have SO two. Um, plus O2 is in equilibrium with, and I'm just going to draw the line down, react in a 10-liter reaction vessel. Now, do you think the volume of a container has something to do with our rice table? Yeah, it does. What are we supposed to use in rice tables? We're supposed to use moles, but what do we really want to try to use? Molarity, that's much easier. When and only when can you use molarity? The volume is constant. Now, this is kind of funny. You haven't seen this yet. It said reaction vessel. What is a reaction vessel? No, it's just where it takes place. Do you know anything about what this vessel looks like or how it is? It's Potentially, it could expand. However, how can you know in this, in this particular problem it does not expand? No. It mentions leaders once, and does it ever mention it again? No, so you can assume that it... Stays constant. Very good. Well, as soon as we know that it stays constant, what do we need to do with this volume? Why? To get molarity. What if this was already molarity? Would we have to do any division? Nope. So very good. So let's go ahead and change these things to molarity. Um, so really, uh, how many? Pla how, would, what I'm, how can I get it without having to do any hard math? How many places? Which way? Try again. Upward, yeah, that's a great answer. Move it up every time. Move it up. You need to move it right. No, excuse me, you are right. What am I thinking? All right, so reaction to form 0.162 moles, and this is the key. What is the next most important phrase you see? At equilibrium. What does that tell you about this value? It's where? Very good. This value is going to be at EF. Now, is it going to be that exact value? Why not? You still got to get it into molarity, which is going to be 0 0.0162 molar. All right, so let's go ahead and plug in the numbers uh, that we have so far. So SO2 is 0 0.0250. Uh, O2 is 0 0.0200. Molar. What have I not done yet? Yeah, I haven't finished the reaction nor balanced it yet. Let's do that first. My apologies. That's the first thing you always need to do. Is it balanced? What do you need? Two. Very good. Two, one, two. Very good. All right, so now it's balanced. And then our bottom one is going to be 0 0.1, excuse me, no, 0 0.0162. If they give you an EF value, should you be very excited and happy? 
it makes it so much simpler if they give you an EF value. So again, this is just kind of how I like to do it. I like to come in. I like to circle the things that have been given to me. They're locked in a place. I can't do anything with them. What's next? Okay. Well, what about my SO3? What did it start with? Did they ever tell you? Then assume what? It is zero. Very good. So we're just going to assume that it is zero. Why, excuse me, are we going to need Q for this rice table? Why not? Okay. One, no, 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 no. One of your initials is zero. When will you have to use Q? When none of them are zero. So if you've got a zero in the first one, you're good. You don't need Q. That's the, that's the best news about this. So this is a normal reaction. So what is the sign of our reactants? All right, so we have negative X. We have negative X. And then what is the sign of our product? Hang, hang on, hang on, hang on. Positive what? X. X. Now, Juhi, what were you fixing to jump on me for? Very good. What, has, what else has to be applied in the C? The coefficients count in the C row. So we've got to bring our coefficients down. So 2x and 2x. Now, please don't overthink this part of it. What is the only thing, Genasia, that EX is for? That's it. You're just making a formula statement here, right? So we're going to do 0 0.0250 minus 2x. 0 0.02 minus x, and then 0 plus 2x. This is where I heard a lot of you messing this up. I'm just going to use this one as an example. Do you set 0 plus 2x equal to 0? No. no. What do you set it equal to? EF is the answer. It's what you set everything equal to. So this is why you should be so excited is because the fact that you have the ability to set this equal to something and do what? Solve for x. So when I set it equal to, I'm just going to write it right here, point, uh, zero, 0.0162, now can I solve for x? Very simply. Absolutely. What was your x in this case? Okay, how did you solve for that? Very good. Just divide by 2. So... Um, so point zero zero eight one zero is x. Once you have x, and again, you need to be a little bit better organized than mine. Mine doesn't look very good. What are you going to do with that x? Plug Just plug it in. So minus two x times zero point zero zero eight one, and then minus zero point zero zero eight one, and then you should have your answers. So your answers to the other side. Uh, let me double check, make sure I'm looking at the right one. Yep. So 0 0.0080 molar. And this is 0 0.0119 molar. All right. So do we have all of our values? Yes. Now, what is technically going on at EF? What are these values telling me? They're the concentrations when? Very good at equilibrium. Have I answered the question? No. The question is, what is K? Where do I get my values for K? EF. I got to plug them into EF. Can I just take numbers, plug them in and get an answer? What must you always write first? Always write your K first. Always write K. Because i got to know where the numbers are coming from and going to. KC or KP? How do you know it's KC? Fantastic concentration. So, all right, I'm just going to change pages on you and go with... Are they coming in? Okay. What a man. I didn't know. I couldn't tell. Oh, okay. This is Barbie. That did make my day. All right. So this is the S, or excuse me, not the S, but the KC. Please make sure you write this. Now, when you plug your, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. All right. Uh, when you plug in your values, please make sure you plug them in correctly. Uh, a lot of you got a lot of these right, but I still want to make a point of emphasis. 
um, that I saw, especially in second period. And some guy, sometimes y'all do make the exact same mistakes. When you're writing your answers, what must answers always be in? Thank you. A lot of you were failing to do that. How many of you missed this? I didn't take a point off, but how many of you did I put SF on? Okay, again, significant figures. SF is sig figs. A lot of you, I had some people writing down what the entire calculator was giving them. Guys, that's never been okay. That's never been appropriate. Looking at the problem, how many significant figures are in all of your givens? Three. So your answer must need to have. Now, how many of you did not get the correct answer, but you got the setup right? Because I had a lot of people in second period not getting the correct setup or not getting the correct answer because calculator errors, okay? So that was the thing. So I got 285 when I did it. Some of you came up with 284. Some of I think a lot of you, I saw 284.3 something. So again, no, no, if it's 284, they're definitely not going to take points off for sure. Now, if you put 30, that's wrong. But if you, took, if you are in the 280-ish range, you are perfectly fine. Because here's what they're going to do, and this is what everybody needs to hear. Let's say you said 0 .1, 0, uh, 0 0.12 right here. What they're going to do is they're going to take your numbers, and they have a calculator. They punch your numbers in the calculator, and as long as your number matches what you wrote, you're good. That's how they do it. They literally punch your numbers in the calculator. So, yes, you have to write this. That's fine. Now let me let me show you this. If you were to miss this and not write it, I don't know. Again, this is I don't know exactly how they grade these. There is a chance they may not even give you this. So it's that important in you writing this. But let's say for some reason you write this and they give you a point for this. What if you mess up the answer? Have you still earned that point? Yeah, so don't lose the easy point by not writing that. So please make sure you earn the easy point there. All right, so that's the first one. Let's look at the second one. Any questions before I move on? All right, good. Okay. Great question. The K is always the same at the same temperature. If I were to change any of these number of moles, for that reaction, K would have always been 285 no matter what numbers you give me in terms of concentration because it's at that same temperature because what's temperature dependent? Everything is temperature dependent. So if I were to change this from 1,000 to 100, K would change drastically. Okay. Now, what are you asking? What if it started at 1,000 K and then it said, what is K at 100? Everybody in the entire world will miss that question because I don't even know how to do that. I don't know how you alter K in terms of temperature because the data that they gave you was at 1,000, not at 100. So it'll be the same. has to be the exact same. They will never, ever do that to you. They won't change the temperature on you, okay? All right. So this time, if 0.8 moles of N2 are in a 7-liter flask, what's the good news? It says flask, that, so that tells you. Volume constant. So what can we do already? All right, we can change these to molarity. So what am I going to have to do to this 0 0.8? Divide it by 7. All right, so that's going to change that to, um, I have it written right here. So it's 0 0.14 or 114. All right, so that's molarity. So that many moles of N2 in a 7-liter flask with, point, with 3 moles of H2. So let's divide that uh, by 7. So that's going to change to 0 0.429 molar are allowed to do what? So as soon as you see that phrase, what have they told you about N2 and H2? They're reactants. Very good. So we have, let me go ahead and set up my rice table. All right. Um, so we have this. So we have N2 plus H2 in equilibrium. After several hours... Now, this is kind of weird, and I don't think the AP exam would do this to you, but what do you notice? They never mention what word? They never mention the fact that it achieved equilibrium. However, once it has reacted, they want you to assume what has occurred. 
equilibrium has occurred. So this next value is something that you need to pay attention to. After several hours, matter of fact, let me go ahead and plug these numbers in since I've already got them. Um, so uh, 0 0.114 molar, 0 0.429 molar, all right? After several hours, the concentration of what? Very, very important. So what have they just done? They gave you its initial and what? And its final. That's kind of weird, but it's possible for them to do this. The concentration of H2 is measured at... What do you notice about that value that's different? It's already in molarity. How many of you divided that number by 7? Did anybody do that? I'm glad. Very good. Make sure you... So as units, very important in you paying attention and catching that. Very imperative that you catch that. So 0 0.278 molar. And they will do that. They will change units on you in the middle of a problem and see if you're smart enough and, and paying careful attention enough to catch that. All right, and then what is the question? What is K? Where will our values come from? EF. EF. So we got to have EF. What is the first major huge problem I have? I don't even have a product. Do they ever tell you what it is? Again, this is where I'm not quite sure how they'll address this. They'll either have to tell you it's what process. The Haber process, which you should know by now, is the production of ammonia in H3. All right? Or they'll have to say the product is blah, 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 blah. Okay, so again, I don't know how they're going to address that. I don't know if you are required to know this uh, formula or not, but it's a good one to know anyways. Is that balanced? Nope. So I need a 3 here and a... So they tell you nothing about the product. So what can you assume? When? Only initially. You can never assume that it's zero at equilibrium. Because if it's at equilibrium and you have zero, that means nothing reacted. Exactly. Does that make sense? That means K would be zero. Maybe, potentially. In this case, it'd be zero over. Zero over something? Is that one or undefined? That's right. You can't. That's undefined. That's right. So zero over would be zero. So then that would not be a good idea. All right. Um, and you would have seen that if you would have plugged that in and, and figured out that wasn't true. So do we need to use Q in this rice table? No. Why not? There are zero where? In initial. When do you use Q? When none of them are zero. Yes, ma'am. Because it tells you H2 is 0.429, and then it tells you after several hours H2 is. Mm-mm. -mm. But because it's the same thing. I mean, Janasia, yes, you can. You can use stoichiometry here, but it go, that makes it so much more complicated. Like you'd have to do it three different times. Here, you're just doing them all at once. There, you can do stoichiometry to solve for all of this, but it is aggravating and cumbersome and a much longer process. Does, it, does it, I mean, do you make... Do you understand why, I'm, first of all, do you understand why it's 0.114 and 0.429, why I changed that? Yeah. Okay, that's molarity. Do you understand why that this value is zero? Okay. Anywhere in this problem do they ever mention NH3? So you have to assume that initially there was none. Mm -mm. If I handed you some dough and some pepperonis and some sauce... You have reactants, right? How many pizzas are you starting with? None. Stop it. Are you with me? You're right. That would be a bad pizza without any cheese. <laughs> All right. Now, this is a normal reaction. Since we're not solving for Q, we can know that where are my signs? Where are my positives and negative signs? Reactants are what? Negative, negative, 
and positive, what else, apply, what else is applied to the C? Coefficient, so this is minus x, minus 3x, and plus 2x. What is the only thing that EX is used for? Math, just bring it down, 0 0.114 minus x. Keely, by the way, make sure you balance it properly. <laughs> Twice. 429 minus 3x, and then 0 plus 2x. Why should you be celebrating? What do you have that's great news? You have an EF, right? So set what equal to what? Set 0.429 minus 3x equal to what is at EF. And then do what? Ooh, solve for x. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so set this equal to that number, 0.278, and then solve for x. So what is x in this uh, problem? Now, some of you use this 0, and y'all are going to be amazed when you see this. Some of you use 0 0.05. Some of you use 0 0.053. You're going to see a because me and second period did it, and we figured out what the difference was, and I'm going to show you what it is. So now we have point, point zero 0.05 or point 0.0503. Which one is technically the correct answer? 0.503. Why? It's three sig figs. Notice all your pieces of data. What are all the pieces of data? They're all three, so always continue that trend. All right, so let's just go ahead and plug, find out what all of them are. 0, 6, 4, and I think it's just 0. I'm just going to write that extra 0 in, and then 0 0.1. And here's the amazing part. How many of you right here wrote 0 0.101? Right here. Did anybody write that, 101? Because if you go to three sig figs, it's t it is 101. Let me, let me show you how, how much different it will uh, be. Matter of fact, this one, I remember, I, I remember that's what it was. I have 640. Some of you, if you went to uh, three sig figs, it was 0 0.637. This is what's fixing to blow your mind, and you'll see it in just one second. So what do we have to do next? What are we asking for? Where do you get your numbers from? They give you EF. All right. So first of all, anytime you have to solve for K, what do you need to write? Write K. Now, what K are we dealing with? Okay, C. Uh, squared. No, what am I doing? N2. H3. No, H2 cubed. All right. Brackets. Yeah, that's what I was just saying a minute ago. Yes, this will earn you a point. Okay. Yeah, because if you don't write it, you can lose all the points. Okay. All right. So this is what I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what um, I did. So this was the answer that I got when I did this. How many of you got that? Let me show you where all the differences are. If, and just follow the colors, if you would have used 0 0.101, this is what you would have gotten. Hang on. Then, if you would have also used 0 0.063, you, I think it was uh, 4 or 5. Is that what you got? Mm -hmm. So, literally, going from 1, from point 0.1, what? Literally. literally. From going from <laughs> point 0.1 and changing it 1 1,000th. Went from 0.42 to 0.27.
That's a huge change in decimals by adding one one thousandth. And if you went, if you use not point six, point six three seven, it was point four five. Okay, you said three something. Yeah, what did you use? Ah, oh, that's so you even went further out than that. So you use point one zero zero six, and you had point what? Whatever. But essentially, changing it that much alters it that much. So it's, it's amazing to see how much it can change um, and aspects like that. All right, so what is the right answer? All of them are okay. Because what are they going to do? They're going to take your numbers that you have, punch them in, and if they see that you did it... Um, the right way they'll give you credit because here's what's going to happen if there's a question like this on the AP exam every per there was a lot of different answers in here guess what if all of you got different answers what's going to happen across the world these answers are going to keep popping up so they're going to have a list of these answers and if they see any of these you're good to go so does that make sense because the way you round and the way you enter stuff and the way you use significant figures will alter your answer but as long as your answer is, is within the same realm of what it should be like if you would have gotten 400 right here it's obvious that it's wrong or a decimal number it's obvious so as long as you're within the seven frame you're fine all right so let's look at the next one the following reaction occurs in a one liter sealed flask what's great about that okay you got really excited about that didn't you okay it's sealed so the volume doesn't change what else is even better about the fact that the volume doesn't change what about the size of the flask it's once you don't have to do any math here so literally you just come in and change that to molarity change that to molarity and good news what about that one it's already in molarity um, the following reaction occurs in a one liter sealed flask at a constant temperature is that good Yes, two mol 0.2 moles of H2 gas and 0.1 moles of N2 gas were initially, is that a very in important word? Okay, no, initially is I. That just gave you I. So, so far, in this, and it gave you reactant, so R, what do you notice about this re uh, and the last one? It's the same exact equation. And some people balanced it wrong twice. All right. All right. So we know initially it was H2 was 0 0.2 molar, uh, 0 0.1 molar. Gases were initially placed in flask once equilibrium was reached. This is probably how you're more likely going to see it. Is, what has that just told you? That told you the next thing you're fixing to see is at EF. There was 0 0.080 molar of NH3. 0 0.080 molar. What do you need to fill in first? What about the initial of NH3? Okay, Genasia, since they don't mention it, what is it? Does that make sense? Okay. Do I need Q? No. Why? Okay. When is the only time you use Q? This is the third time I've asked this, so you better have you better get it by this point. When none of these I's are zero is the only time you will ever use Q. All right. So this is a normal reaction. So we have minus 3x. We have minus x and plus 2x. What's the great news about this one? You have the final, so just figure it out and solve for X. You, you can go from there. Now, due to time's sake, I'm not going to go through and show you all of that. I will go ahead. Um, this one was 0 0.06, right? 0 0.08. Okay, so then I, I'm going to go back. And again, you could go through and figure out. What was X, by the way? 0 0.1, 0 0.04. Okay, very good. So just divide 0 0.08 by 2, and you get... Did I get those backwards? Okay, sorry. All right, so this one is 0, 08, 
and this was 0 0.06. I knew the numbers, I just didn't know which one they went to. All right, so I'm going to go back to this, and I'm going to erase these numbers. Because, again, anytime you need K, what do you have to do? you got to write K. Okay. Um, NH3 was, um, help me out. That's right. And then... It's eight and six. What was nitrogen? Okay, so that was right. I'm sorry. Now, look at all of your pieces of data. How many significant figures are in all of those? All of them have two. Not this is a different question. No, it's not. No, they're all there. Sorry. Uh, so two, two. 2, 2, and that's it. They're all 2. Now, I saw a lot of 208s. Why is that wrong? So what is it supposed to be? Or 210? <laughs> all right, so that is that one. Now, last thing real quick i'm not going to go through the rice table because i knew y'all knew that it went into quadratic the thing that kind of bothered me was the fact that you couldn't do the reaction part on this one it says you are starting with what okay i to what specifically what is a vapor is that very important yes forming so what is coming next the product in equilibrium with the iodine what is an ion? Charged. Something that is charged. How do you know the charge of an element? The, the group number. What group number is iodine in? Seven. So its charge has to be... Thank you. I don't know why so that confused so many of you. And is that balanced? No. So what we're essentially saying is that you can take a diatomic iodine molecule and split it in two and have two iodine ions. Okay, that's exactly what's happening. And again, uh, this is going to give you the quadratic. Are you going to need to solve for K in this? How do you know? Because they give you K, duh. What are they asking for? Find the concentrations. So what are they wanting to know? EF. That's exactly what they're wanting to know. They're trying to get you to solve for EF. And again, that's the quadratic, so you won't really have to do anything there with that one. All right. That's not what I wanted to do. Do what? No, they will not give you anything quadratic at all. All right, so let's go into Le Chatelier. This is the third time I have taught this, so this is going to go real quick. I taught this in 15 minutes last class. So, Le Chatelier. What is the purpose of Le Chatelier? And I would probably be a good idea to write this down. The purpose of Le Chatelier is to reestablish, write this down, reestablish equilibrium. That's the whole purpose of Le Chatelier is to reestablish equilibrium. So here's the point. What if I take, uh, let me read this, I guess. If a stress is applied to a system at equilibrium, the position of equilibrium will shift in the direction which reduces the stress. So what if I took every class on this hallway and I pulled every student and put them in here and told them to listen to the shot lay lecture? You guys would pretty, be pretty upset. There would be way too many people in here. So how could you shift, slide, move, boogie, whatever, to alter, don't look at me like that, Caitlin, to alter the equilibrium so it is not as stressful? you would move them back outside, right? So we want to reestablish equilibrium. So we want to move opposite of the stress point. Well, what caused the stress? Adding people in here. So what relieves it? Removing people. So that's how we will do this. Now, there are three major things you need to be aware of. Shifts occur to reestablish equilibrium positions. What does K always want to be? So highlight that purple statement. K loves to be 1. Why? When K is 1, what is it equal to? Or when K is 1, what is it? 
at equilibrium. That's the goal of every reaction is to achieve equilibrium. So if it's a really, really small number, it's trying to get to one as best as possible. If it's a really, really large number, it's trying to get back to one. So there's two things we, or three things we can do. It's like I was saying. If you add or remove a reagent, now, this is a very important word. This why I underlined it made it a different color. When it says reagent, all that means is anything in the reaction at all. Reactant or product. Okay, it's not just a reactant. It's both. Anything that can cause a change. So it's just like it says, as long as you milk a cow, guess what? You can keep milking it forever. Once you stop milking a cow, what happens? It dries up. It'll never make milk again. Okay? Yeah, really. You don't like milking a cow? Like it, once you stop milking it, it won't produce any more milk. Yeah. Like if you quit milking it, it won't ever make milk again. <laughs> this is the big one that gets, that gets a lot of people. The one right here in this second. Increasing pressure. So if I put people in here, is that going to increase the pressure of the room? Yeah, absolutely, okay. So how could we shift or move or change in terms of a pressure sake to reduce that? And this is what you need to get. If you increase pressure, how are you shifting? To the what? Fewest number of moles of a gas. How do you know which side has the fewest moles of a gas? What? What do you do? Yes. What did you say? Somebody said it. Add up the coefficients. Of what specifically? And I, I say this, then y'all are going to be like, that's dumb. Why are you saying that? Somebody's going to do it. You add up the coefficients of what only? Gases. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. The moles come from the coefficients. So if I ask you how many, which side has the least number of moles of gas, you add up the coefficients. But only add up the coefficients of what types of molecules? If, you, if it's an aqueous, do you add that in? No. If it's a solid, no, don't add it in. Somebody's going to mess this up, I promise, just because they're not paying attention. And then finally, this is a big one too. Matter of fact, this one's already gotten a lot of you on a test. I wrote it on the board and told you, and you still missed it. Remember it was like, if we added a solid piece of carbon, how would the equilibrium shift? It won't. Why? Catalyst and solids do not have any effect on equilibrium, so put a huge star by that one. They will try to get you with that one, I guarantee it. Somewhere down the line, multiple choice for response, you're going to see something where they're trying to trick you. Don't let them. Don't let them outsmart you. Anytime you add a catalyst, what is the only thing a catalyst does? It lowers the activation energy and speeds it up. So what's it going to do to K? Nothing. It's just going to get you there a lot faster. That's the only thing a catalyst can do. And the final one that's really affecting people that they, they don't pay attention to is how temperature affects K. How does temperature affect K? And it depends upon you knowing two very important things. Whether the reaction is endothermic or exothermic, and should you be able to tell by this point? Yes. Or, excuse me, not or, and where is the heat in the reaction if it's exo or if it's endo? If I tell you that the enthalpy is negative, what type of reaction is that? Why? What is, what is enthalpy? Energy, but what is its symbol? Delta H. If delta H is negative, then the reaction is exothermic. How is heat treated in exothermic reactions? It's released or getting rid of or ex expelled. So what side of a reaction should it be on? Product, because it's producing it, right? If delta H is positive, what is it? What type of reaction? It's endothermic. So what is energy done with in endothermic reactions? It's added, so what side should the heat be on? It should be on the right. It's exactly what it says. So if you will notice, it says an endothermic reaction. Notice where the heat is. What side of the arrows is it on? It's on the reactant side. So if I'm adding or moving heat around, 
or adding and uh, changing heat, it's definitely going to be dependent upon where the heat is going to be situated. What if I say this? What if I tell you that the reaction is thermodynamically unfavorable? It's endothermic. Very good. Do you think you possibly could see that? Sure, absolutely. So that's something to kind of keep in mind as well. Uh, and again, so just make sure you pay very, very close attention to this. But changing temperature is a lot like adding or removing a reaction or product, okay? So let's look at some ex examples. All right, so if we have a closed container of ice and water at equilibrium, then the temperature is raised, all right? First of all, what is temperature going to affect in this reaction? What, what is ice, energy, or water? Energy. Temperature is? All right, so if I add it here, is that value going up or down? How do you shift from an addition? So if I'm adding energy here, what way am I going to go? And don't you say the right. To the, product. to the products. So we are going to do what? The system temporarily shifts to the products to restore equilibrium. And again, why? Because temperature is raised, temperature is energy. When you go up or you add, you go away. All right, so that's what's going to happen. Do you all have the arrows? Okay. All right. A closed container of N2O4 and NO2 is at equilibrium. Then NO2 is added. How do you shift from an addition? Away. away. So we're adding here. So what way are we going to go? And don't you say left. To the reactant. So the system temporarily shifts to the reactants in order to reestablish equilibrium. Pretty self-explanatory, right? All right. A closed container of water and it's vapor at equilibrium. Vapor is removed. All right. How do we shift from a removal? Towards, Towards the removal. So what side is going down? The products are reacting. So products will go down. So what side do we need to go to? Don't say right. To the products. Very good. So the system temporarily shifts to the products to restore equilibrium. Be very careful here. The pressure is increased. All right. Think, and I, this is the one that will trick you. How do you shift with an increase in pressure? No. The fewest moles of a gas. So I would write this one down. Pressure increased. Fewest moles of a gas. This is the one that's going to trip you up. I'm telling you now. Please don't let it. All right. So, and how do you count or how do you know which side has the fewest moles of a gas? Add the coefficients. So, which side has the least? Reactants. Because the reactants has a 1. The products has a 2. So, it's got to go towards the reactants. I'm telling you, don't let the pressure ones trip you up. So, and highlight that green part. It shifts towards the reactants because there are fewer moles of a gas on that side of an equation. Very important right there. Guys, this is one of the biggest cheat sheets you could ever find. I found this. I didn't create it, but I loved it. It's amazing. There's two things I want you to know that are very important. So put, a, put bracket these two things on the inside and put a big star. What is an inert gas? A gas that does not react which would be the noble gases, okay? What is a catalyst going to do? Those are the only two things that have no effect, all right? The next four, do it on the outside, please. Do all the temperature ones together, all right? And then the last two, just put a big star by the bottom two. Make sure you know those because those are very important. So if you ever get to a problem and you're like, I don't know what to do, this is your cheat sheet. Go back and use it. It gives you every possible explanation that you could possibly use in any of this. All right, so this is what we're going to do the last few minutes of class. I want you to answer all of those, A through F, on both of them. Okay, and that's the last thing we're going to do for today. We'll answer, um, huh? Yeah, we, this is where we got to. So I covered four rice tables and Le Chatelier in one class period today. That's a pretty good day in AP Chemistry. <laughs>